I'm Steph Garcia Sykos with Athletic Director U, and we are here in Kansas City for the Women Leaders Convention, the first one back in person since 2019. I'm joined today by Loretta Lamar, who is the Senior Associate AD in SWA at the U.S. Naval Academy, and Trisha Brandenburg, the Executive Associate AD at Army West Point. Trisha, Loretta, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Well, we are going to be on the same team here, not against <laughs> each other. We're going to talk service academies. I want to talk about recruiting and retaining, and let's start with student athletes. My first really basic question for both of you is, how do student athletes even get into your schools? I know service academies have a little bit of a different process. It's kind of the same, really. Our coaches go out recruiting. Uh, students do it questionnaires and tell us about themselves. Coaches see them at events. They go to their high schools and talk to them. Um, they apply just like everyone else applies. Um, and they you know, go through the process like every other student. They have to have a nomination from a congressman or a senator. They have to do a physical, so they have to be physically ready. They have to do um, a lot of medical stuff. So it's kind of the same. Yeah, and I would say as somebody who's new to the academy life, so to speak, um, you know, while there are a lot of things that are the same, I think the biggest thing I've learned in my short time at Army West Point is I think the process is a lot longer, and I think mm -hmm. there are great reasons for that, you know, that trying to find uh, prospects that are going to be the best fit for the academy, and, and the, whether it's the medical piece um, or the various um, processes that they need to go through as part of the admissions process um, that maybe are a little bit more, more strenuous than uh, applying to your average regional institution, mm -hmm. um, you know, but there's good reasons for those. Are student athletes on any kind of athletic financial aid? No. No. Why is that? Because everybody is a, either part of the, the cadets or they're a midshipman. They are not student, I mean, they are student athletes, but they are part of the whole, not separated. And so there are no scholarships. No one's on scholarship. Um, or I guess everyone's on scholarship, oh, yeah. if you think of it that way, um, because everyone's getting uh, education with the output being your service at the end of it. Correct. You know, so there's not tuition in the normal sense of uh, what you see at a typical institution or, or what many of our other institutions look like. So um, because there's not tuition, there's not scholarships. Well, I would imagine that kind of attracts a very unique kind of, of person, a unique kind of student athlete. How are your coaches uh, really tapping into that, uh, the unique draw of a service academy when they go out and recruit, when they're looking at uh, potential prospects? And I'm curious, your perspective, this is your first fall, yeah. your first recruiting cycle, and then Loretta, of course, you, you've seen this a couple times. Yeah, I think for me, like the biggest thing I've noticed, I think the biggest thing our coaches have to sell to prospects is they're guaranteed a job mm -hmm. when they're done and the experiences that they have exposure to mm -hmm. uh, and the programs they have exposure to and the education that they receive is, is really second to none. And so I think that's probably the biggest selling point for the academies in terms of those experiences and the education that they're exposed to and then the guaranteed job when they're done. Yeah, we definitely are looking for students who have a heart for serving because if you don't want to serve there's no point in coming right. um, so you're looking for those students who want to serve their country um, you know we like to say you know Air Force says we fly a lot but actually Navy has more pilots than <laughs> they do so oopsie um, <laughs> but you know so we tell them if that's what you're looking to do or you can you know there's lots of different things you can be the submarine you, you can be a marine you can do you know you can go you know, some of the kids who I think are a little crazier do EOD, which is explosives, which kind of scares me, but you know, that's a personal thing. Um, actually, I met two women who did that, and like, and they're the class of like 2018, maybe, and I'm oh, like, wow, holy cow, like that's crazy to me, but if that's your Ballywick, yeah. power to you, because we all need that. Absolutely. But, um, so you want someone who wants to serve, and I think yeah. it, that's number one. Do you want to serve, and, and can you get in? Can you, you know, go through the rigors of it? Um, I don't know about you guys, but like all of our students graduate with a Bachelor of Science because it's yeah. basically an engineering education. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to be able to do math, you have to like science because yeah. even if you're a poli sci major, you're going to do math and science. And, and um, so it's a different kind of student that's, yeah. I think you have to have a mind towards that. And if you don't, it's yeah, really I mean, hard. We, we talk a lot about selfless service mm -hmm. and, and you know, that's a 
value that we have at the academies and as part of the military. And so um, that's something our coaches certainly look for and prospects. But I think the other unique part of the academies, it's not just the job when you're done in the military, but the um, the investment our alums and old grads have in our cadets and um, their future careers, whether it's in the military or after they're done serving in the military and the connections, we have an entrepreneurial network um, you know, that really supports our grads um, once they're done serving and, and starting their own businesses. And it, you know, those types of things are super impressive. Are there, as far as the process goes, are there you know, recruiting weekends like we read about you know, happening at Texas or Georgia or Clemson, or is it a little bit of a different um, experience for it's different aspects? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the same, but I mean, they eat a lot. I don't know how they eat that much food. Sometimes I'm like, you ate what in two days? But they do. I mean, I don't know where yeah. they're packing it away, but you know, they go to a football game if it's a football weekend. They go to a basketball game if it's a basketball weekend. Um, you know, they might, if they have, well, whoever their host is, might take them to wrestling or some other event. Um, we try to pair them with the younger students. That way they stay in the hall. They see what mm -hmm. it's like to be a, to be a mid because when you come as a, as a plebe, it's not like you're going to go, hey, let's go out every weekend because that's not going to, I mean, you're going to have some of those, but you're not going to do that every weekend. Mm -hmm. So they need to see what it's like because, you know, I've asked students in the past when they get ready to leave, why are you leaving? And they're like, well, this isn't what I thought it was mm -hmm. going to be, or it's not what I hoped it would be. And um, so you have to show them what it's going to be like, at least that very first year, because yeah. otherwise I think they get, they feel very like cheated maybe. I'm not it's sure that's the, the word. It's a shock to the system. Yeah. yeah. And I think part of it is, is, you know, that has to be part of the retention goals too mm -hmm. of, telling the story of what the experience is really going to be like mm -hmm. so that there are fewer surprises. I think going through that plebe year is hard enough um, for there to be surprises with that makes it more challenging. So providing the most honest experience possible. And I think that's what most institutions are trying to do mm -hmm. with their recruiting weekends or should be trying to do with their recruiting weekends. <laughs> but you know, our recruiting weekends probably look different than maybe some of the Power Five weekends. but. That involves also like climbing into tanks and visiting the space science program and, and mm -hmm. doing some things that are really kind of cool that are different than what you might see at those institutions too. Absolutely. Well, one big question that recruits now are asking is what are my NIL opportunities? And at the <laughs> service academies, I don't think you really get those opportunities as a, if I believe because you're serving, you're kind of considered a federal employee. You're a federal employee. So um, we actually, a few, when the NIL first came out, the three compliance people in the, the three service academy, the division one ones, we got together and we couldn't come to resolution. So everyone said, I'm going to ask my JAG. And so we all went to our JAGs they couldn't come to resolution. So we have a letter from the Department of Defense Office of Ethics wow. that says, no, um, <laughs> it's against the CFR, so they can't do it. Um, which is odd because there's a little opt-out sentence kind of buried in there that says, but if, it, if you're not representing the, I don't even know how it's worded, like the military, it's possible. I'm like, I don't know what that means. Um, but we just tell our students no, because your NIL, is really tied to your uniform or yep. your sport. And so if you really can't do it without representing your sport, so it's very hard to do that. So our students haven't been, I mean, they're annoyed that they can't do it, but I don't think they have revolted about it. They, they yeah. get kind of frustrated with it, but they haven't, they have, I mean, we've explained it to them and we've done, a, I mean, we've worked really hard to be very transparent in that space. Um, so I don't think we've had any, we haven't had any yeah. issues with it. I would say, you know, it, again, it's not something that our cadets are allowed to do right, right now because of the military code and the advice that we've gotten um, from the DOD and the like. But um, I think that's something that we're still open to having those conversations and seeing where that leads to, you know, whether, you know, um, those aren't fast moving conversations, no. but um, being open to seeing what is possible and what's not possible within the military code. Um, but at the same time, I'm not sure our cadets have a whole lot of time also, mm -hmm. I think, plays into it um, towards, you know, developing robust NIL. 
opportunities, um, but certainly with the connections of our alumni and those types of things, those opportunities are out there. And so, you know, continuing to see what, what might be possible there is something that certainly continues to be part of our conversation, even though we can't give give the go ahead right now. Right, internships, professional development, that's cool. Being a TikTok influencer might might take up a little bit of time. Right. Well, are there any specific strategies that you use as a department to really garner that sense of community and uh, culture from student athletes, like from day one? Obviously, they're coming to Army, to Navy. They're gonna be pretty gung-ho about what they're getting into, but from an athletic standpoint, is there anything that you do to make sure that uh, everyone's kind of rowing in the same direction? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, it starts with the coaches mm -hmm. and starts with the, the culture our athletic director, Mike Buddy, is setting from the top and in, in how we interact with each other. And I think you see that play out in terms of um, how our, our cadet athletes interact with each other, too. And, you know, we played each other twice in sports this weekend and seeing other coaches come out or on social media congratulating um, their colleagues. Um, I think our, our cadet athletes notice that, and I think that really contributes to kind of how we set the tone mm -hmm. um, in terms of building that culture as a department. Yeah, we definitely, I mean, our student athletes know they're part of the culture of the athletic department, but we have a very, in Navy, we have a very strong, it is one brigade, mm -hmm. and because they are part of the brigade, we don't say, oh, come over here and hide. We don't do that. So they know they have space and it's a safe space and it's a relaxed space. And, um, but they know that at the end of the day, they're still the brigade and they're part of the brigade of midshipmen. And we don't, you know, do they get extra things? Yes. Do they wear special gear? Yes. Did I buy them all bucket hats this year and they love me for that? Yes, I did. <laughs> um, but you know, those are things that we do that are special for them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things at Navy we do is all of our student athletes, well, every other year you get a backpack and it says, um, it's got the logo on and it says student athlete. Um, I don't monitor it, but our team captains do. And if you quit, you have to give it back because oh. to them, that's a sense of pride that they carry. And I kind of let them do it. I, you know, I tell them that's your job as a captain. You monitor your team because those are your people. And mm -hmm. when they're not part of the team, they can't look like the team because they're not part of the team anymore. And the kids have really, they embrace it. I, I really, I, like I said, I don't monitor it. They do. And these things just show up in my office and I'm like, what is that? And they're like, so-and-so quit. And you said, if they're not on the team, they can't look like us. And we don't want them to be, I, I'm like, you do you. I have no say in this, which I think is good because that's, that builds their team and they know who their teammates are and, um, and they're good about it. They support one another. They come to each other's events. They're, um, usually the most vocal people at some events, so you have to like, you know, <laughs> tamp them down a little bit, but you know, they enjoy that and they enjoy um, cheering for one another and that's always a positive. Do you find there's kind of a deeper sense of community among your student athletes than maybe you found at other institutions, not service institutions? I mean, Trisha, you are you were new to Army. Yeah. Uh, is there at all that uh, difference? I, I think one of the things that has been new to me or not necessarily new to me but pleasantly surprised me is how much they really support each other mm -hmm. um, and that's outside of their sport too whether it's supporting each other through you know the various details that they need to pay attention to from a military standpoint mm -hmm. to the classroom uh, and helping you know being able to know whether somebody's struggling and to help them get help mm -hmm. um, I think that's the the probably the most, not, not surprised, but like, you know, it's been one of the things that, you know, has been nicest to see in my short time at Army West Point. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's take a step back and talk about recruiting and retaining head coaches. Given, you know, the unique opportunities your students have coming to a service academy, how do you pitch your institution to potential head coaches? Very carefully. And we actually, I would say at Navy, and probably to the same extent, Army, most of our head coaches, I, I, we just hired a golf coach, so I, I lie a little bit, but we just hired a golf <laughs> coach. Um, but it's probably the first golf coach we've hired for the men's side in, well, I've been there 20 years and we've had the same guy. So we don't, <laughs> our coaches don't leave. So I think that's a positive, um, as you have a lot of longevity. Mm -hmm. um, in the few coaching hires we have had, 
um, you know, we sell the program. We, we really talk about the kind of students that they can bring and, and um, we go to, we always look at highly academic places and coaches and winning coaches and try to look for those types of coaches because they can bring that winning high academic mentality with them. Um, but we do, we talk about the academy, what it has to offer. We take them around the city. We, we you know, not so much West Point because Highland Falls is kind of like, <laughs> It's pretty, <laughs> but you know, Annapolis is a different bird. It's a different, you know, like you have New York City, I have Washington DC, but I also have the city of Annapolis, you know, where it's a, it's a little different of a sell, I think, to a head coach, um, to a family, mm -hmm. um, to, you know, to people to come to us because it's, it's a different kind of town. It's a, it's, you know, it's kind of a different, it's a funky little small town mm -hmm. that's not really small, but it's, it is really small. It has and, a small um, town vibe. It, well, it, you know what, honestly, for the state capital, I mean, it, for it being the state capital, it's not a very, it's probably only about 50,000 people, so it's not that big of a town. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a town. Um, but, um, I mean, we work hard. We recruit very diligently when we have an opportunity to hire a head coach. But like I said, we don't really, I mean, we hired a golf coach this year, and I think the last coach we might have hired would have been women's basketball, and he's been there three years, two years, so we don't turn over much. Well, that speaks to great retention rates there. I love yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And I think from our perspective, I think, A, we approach hiring as, you know, I mentioned it to you before we started, of recruiting visits, not interviews. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, you know, Army West Point is a community in, in and of itself. Um, the majority of our head coaches and some of our other staff and coaches live on posts mm -hmm. and so um, there's an elementary school on posts for for our coaches who live on posts and have kids and so you know it's a you know and it's a community where you know it's a gated you know the ultimate gated community <laughs> in a lot of ways and so you know and again I think we're looking at people who come from high academic high achieving backgrounds um, who, uh, you know, they don't necessarily have to have experience at an academy, but they have to have respect for kind of what that process is gonna look like and mm -hmm. be able to work within that system um, because there's a lot of inflexibility built into that that is mm -hmm. different than at some institutions. And um, a lot of it's a good thing. Our, our student, you know, our students, our cadets are much more disciplined, I think, in a lot of ways <laughs> mm -hmm. than, than your average student athlete. And so there's there's positives to that and trying to sell those positive things about mm -hmm. being at academy and, and, and wanting to win at, at the academy level and, and all the benefits and positives that go with that and the benefits and positives of the community that is West Point. Well, we are kind of in an era of, I will say, inflated coaching salaries <laughs> and interesting contracts. Army's FBS independent, Navy's in the AAC. How much are you as administrators kind of having to keep a gauge on what your peers are doing when it comes to coaching contracts? I mean, I think you do that or whatever right. institution that you're at. I mean, that's part of being competitive. That's part of, you know, wanting to win. We're not here just to do the military part. If we, <laughs> if, if we were, we would just have kind of our core mm -hmm. athletics um, programs, but, um, you know, we want to win. And so, you know, that, you know, paying attention to that and being able to right size that for who we are as institutions is, is really important. Well, zooming out even further, <laughs> I would love both of you to kind of define the culture of your departments in a few words. And how does that really impact uh, the type of administrator that chooses to come to Army and Navy? We are working on that right now. <laughs> Funny you should ask. I, I have asked everyone in the office, what do you think our culture is? Um, but you know, I think ours is very much a, a family forward atmosphere um, where we have some adaptability, but we are looking to, I don't wanna say we're focused on winning because we're focused on winning the right way mm -hmm. and having an integrity with what we do. And so, um, again, we haven't had administratively a lot of turnover. Um, it's just, again, it just, I guess people come and just stay forever. They, they never leave. <laughs> um, but we, um, you know, when we're looking for staff, we look for people who get that, you're gonna do it right the, the first time. You're gonna have some adaptability. You need to be adaptable to the things that we have to do because 
I think in a, a service academy, you have to flex in some weird ways that you probably never would think about in a, in a regular um, institution. So you have to be ready to do that flex and and um, just being, you know, honest and open. And you know, I we try to be transparent with what we do. I, sometimes we, I think. You know, quite honestly, we fall a little bit short, but we, we work at being that transparent. Um, just really, you know, just a family kind of nice. I think we do a nice, we, we both put out a nice product. We have, I mean, they're, we're, they're both institutions where you would want to go and work, I think. You know, they're, no one's bashing you in the background or beating you <laughs> up or, you know, making you work long hours. I mean, we do work long hours, but making you work long hours and. Well, you mentioned you've been at Navy for 20 years. Yeah. Why have you stayed? I don't know. Some days. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I enjoy it. I, you know, the people I work with, I enjoy them. Um, I have made a lot of really good friends in our department. Um, we kind of have fun together, which is kind of crazy. And, you know, I might do the athletic compliance and and that's a lot. I mean, we have we just added two more programs. We have 35 varsity programs, which is enough to make you kind of go <laughs> crazy. But, um, but that doesn't mean that in the fall when my marketing person comes running down my office and says, oh, my God, I don't have any interns. Can you roll posters? Guess what I do? I've rolled my fair share of posters. Um, you know, when she was short and she didn't have interns last year, I threw T-shirts out, you know. I think because everyone does what you need to do to get it done mm -hmm. because we at every step of the way we're putting our best foot forward. And if that means, you know, I have to go and be the contest person at lacrosse, which I've done that too, the dizzy stick, I can do it. <laughs> I know how to do that, you know. Um, actually, the soup laughed at me for doing it last year. But, um, but we do what we have to do because we're always putting our best foot forward and, and putting our best product out there. And I think, you know, everyone's in there together and we don't, you know, we don't not do things for one another. And I think honestly, if Trisha or Chris called me and said, hey, Loretta, we're coming, we need X, Y, and Z, I'd be like, okay, what do I, how do I do that for you? <laughs> because that's what you do, that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I still go to Army and the, the, the SWA from many, many moons ago still lives up in West Point. And she's like, am I picking you up at the train station? I'm like, yes, please. And she <laughs> picks me up, takes me to eat, and we go to a game, and I ride home on the bus. You know, it's, it's what we do. I mean, we take care of one another because we have to. Yeah. I want to hear your answer about culture at Army, but I'm, I'm curious, and we mentioned this, you are new. Yes. What about Army West Point really attracted you, and why did you say yes when the opportunity was presented to you? And I think it really is about culture. You know, West Point is the preeminent leadership development institution in the country, and so oh, being, uh, <laughs> being at a place that is conscious about developing leadership and mm -hmm. developing leaders of leaders, um, you know, that's really important to me um, in kind of my professional journey, but also, um, you know, being part of that um, and being, you know, we talk about developing leaders of character and, and, and that driving what we do um, and how we help support our coaches in being those leaders of character so that their intern cadets can become leaders of character as well. So, you know, and I think, you know, Loretta hit on this too, of the, just that community. And I think, you know, West, you know, West Point, is, again, I said, you know, it's the ultimate gated community. You know, there's a lot of us that live on post. I had the fortunate to have the opportunity to live on post and being part of that community, um, both for the greater West Point, but also within our athletic department and um, how we support each other, how we collaborate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are the kind of the culture pieces that really drove me to say yes to the opportunity of Army West Point. Well, I want to wrap with this. I don't want to pit you guys against each other, <laughs> but this year's Army Navy matchup on the gridiron is going to be in Philly, and then mm -hmm. we're going to go on the road for four years. <laughs> First, I want to know how do you use this weekend to recruit both, you know, student athletes, but also coaches or other administrators, and uh, how will this shift to kind of a, the the road tour of this game? How will that kind of impact the the student athlete experience? It will definitely be interesting. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that. Um, a, in terms of how we use it for recruiting, you know, it is a game that every eyeball in America is mm -hmm. on because of the date that we play it on, and, and hopefully that continues mm -hmm. um, with how things are shifting football schedule-wise. But um, 
it's an important game and a historically important game. And you know, it's something I had a, the privilege of going to when I was in college, and just the spectacle of it mm -hmm. is is super impressive. But it extends beyond football too. You mm -hmm. know, we just played. Um, in the Army-Navy Cup and men's soccer at Subaru Park in Philadelphia as well, mm -hmm. in Chester. But, um, you know, there's over, you know, there's eight, 9,000 people at a men's college soccer game. And it just speaks to the importance that Army, the Army-Navy rivalry has from a national perspective and, and how people have bought into that rivalry. Um, and that's, frankly, an easy thing to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, to whether it's to staff that we're recruiting, coaches we're recruiting, or cadets that we're recruiting, um, you get to be part of something that's really important and really special. It is fun. I mean, if you've never been, you should go. <laughs> um, I think in Philly, it's, I mean, it's Philly. It's, 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 if you've never been to it in Philly, Philly is the one place to see it at. Um, I, I remember one of the first ones I went to, we were on the buses, and our buses say across the side, United States Naval Academy, and they're blue, so you're <laughs> driving down the road, and you have a, you know, there's police all around you. And um, we were, I think we were leaving town, it was a Sunday morning, and we were going home, and um, there was an older gentleman, and I'll never forget this, this is one thing that's always resonated with me. He was on the side of the road, maybe going to church or something, I don't know, he was, he was in a suit, he was probably going to church, it was early Sunday, Sunday yeah. morning. And he stopped and saluted the buses. And to me, it, that says a lot about what people think when they see that. And you see it and it kind of gives you like tingles because oh, yeah. you're like, that's kind of cool, right? Like, who else does that? But, um, you know, I had the fortune a few years ago, my mom and sister came and joined me for the game. And my mom was like, so what is, what's it going to be like? And my mom's from, they, they live in California. And I said, number one, you can't complain about the weather. The first time you <laughs> complain about the weather, you're going on the bus and you're not coming off. <laughs> um, and I hope she doesn't watch this because she, she, I truly did say that to her. And it was cold in Philly. I mean, it's very cold oh, in yeah. Philly in December. And um, she's like, what's it going to be like? And I go, well, we ride the bus and we have police escorts. And she's like, what? I go, yeah, from state <laughs> to state, you have different troopers that come on. And the best part is when you get to Philly because you pick up their motorcycle police who will wear these, these leather boots, the high leather boots and these leather jackets. <laughs> it's, it's kind of like a really weird... I can't even say this because it's horrible village people image, but <laughs> it's kind of cool because it's shiny leather and it's yes. really awesome, right? Like, and the leather hat, I mean, it's kind of a neat thing if you've never seen it. Like, I actually touched the guy one year to see if it was really leather and he told me not to touch him again. <laughs> I was like, sorry, sir. Um, so that's kind of cool, right? Like, where else do you get to see it? It's almost like this crazy spectacle, but yeah. it's really not. And so it's just really, like, to me, there's just something kind of neat about that. Yeah. Um, Going to Boston is going to be different, um, they, you know, because they have to take both groups up there. So the brigade mm -hmm. will go up, and and then the um, the corps will come up and and or go over. I guess I don't even know which direction that really is, <laughs> but um, that's going to be different because it's a lot further than they're used to going. You know, because usually, like right now, when we go to Philly, they get up at four in the morning, they load the buses, they caravan, you know, the four thousand of them up there. Um, which in and of itself is kind of cool, but um, so Boston will be different, I think. It'll be kind of fun. I think they've done a lot of things and they put a lot of things in place to make it a really great experience. Um, so I think it'll be fun. Yeah. I think it definitely will be fun. But you know, it is, a, it's an easy sell. I mean, people want to go to that. Um, you know, we've worked some of our schedules so that our, our student athletes can compete and get there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just had a conversation with our basketball coaches for next year in Boston. They're going to play in that area the night before because some of our young ladies have never been to the Army-Navy game because they were always competing. So they'll be able to go to the game. Um, and for our seniors, it'll be their first time. They'll who, Those kids who will be seniors next year, it'll be their first Army-Navy game they'll get to go to. So yeah. we're excited about that. We're really, I'm happy that they get to experience that because I feel like they all should at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and they just need to be part of that. Yeah, I think one of the neat things about the Army-Navy football game in particular is, you know, we talked about community and there's this whole community around Army-Navy and whether it's videos coming in mm -hmm. from different posts or installations all across the world, you know, you know, supporting, you know, their, oh, yeah. their it's really Army funny. or Navy. <laughs> um, that's a lot of fun. And I think being able to move it around, that game around just continues to expose more and more people to the really uniqueness and kind of awesomeness of that, that event. It is the ultimate rivalry, I think. Well, Trisha, Loretta, thank you for 
putting rivalries aside, <laughs> sitting next to each other here and talking to us about just service academies in general. You guys are both part of some very special institutions and uh, we are so happy that you joined us here in Athletic Director U and here at Women Leaders. Awesome. Great. Well, Thanks. Thank you for having us. Go Army. No, beat Navy. <laughs> no. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that was bad. <laughs> phrase. That like, phrase wait. really catches in your mind. It really does. It really does. Oh my God, I'm a hot mess. Oh no. <laughs> Don't fire me, boss. <laughs>